My name is Dale Vince. I'm the founder of Ecotricity. I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. I want to build a sports car, out-and-out -out sports car. That's the challenge, a wind-powered car. My name's Ian, I'm the project manager for this wind car. We're right in the middle of the project. Everything's happening. There are parts being made here, there and everywhere. And drawings are coming out to be made every minute of the day almost, it seems. It's so easy to come up with a better, a more glitzy thing to happen or some advanced way of doing something. The batteries were delivered about 10 days ago and they're all fine, which is good. The motors are on their way. They, sh they should be available Christmas week, actually. <laughs> They all liked the idea of fingerprint recognition. Can we have a look at it? So we, we did have a look at it. Unfortunately, one thing leads to another, leads to another. We, you need to do a lot of work to know what the ramifications of trying to introduce a system like that are. And it sounds relatively easy. You, know, you just change the lock for a fingerprint circuit, but it isn't quite as easy as it first seems. So here we have the raw billet of aluminium for the reduction gear housing. This is a billet rather than a casting because we wanted to get a really nice surface finish for Dale because it's going to be a show vehicle as well as a technology demonstrator. So 90% of this is actually going to be machined away. So it starts off at 80 kilograms and it's going to end up at something like 10 kilograms. But being aluminium, it can all be recycled, so it, it's not an environmental problem like that. Do you need the valid finger to be able to lock the car? Well, what happens if somebody else is locking the car that didn't actually unlock it? And there are other things like uh, the fingerprint circuit needs to have some way of powering up because um, the quiescent current drain on it, it was such that we couldn't leave it powered up all the time. All in all, it actually got very, very complicated, which is why Dale um, has binned the fingerprint entry into the system, but we still have fingerprint recognition to start the vehicle. So the front has been reworked. We've clayed in the front of the radiator inlet duct and the front of the radiator exit duct, filled in and come up with some new brake cooling ducts. This is the first sort of iteration of the clay from Peter's direction to Trevor on what to do. He'll have another look at it and put some tape on it and no doubt it'll get changed again. And when he's happy for it, we'll present it to Dale for him to uh, decide whether or not he likes it. We're only beginning to scratch the surface of what a performance sports type electric vehicle is going to be like to drive. The internal combustion engine has a certain torque curve and a power curve and the torque that an engine produces is the, is the amount of pull it's got and normal internal combustion engines have a lot of torque lower down in their rev range. Initially we're not producing any traction control systems in the vehicle. To get the car operational we're not going to look at these sort of subtle um, improvements that we could bring along later. As the car goes faster, the power rises and the torque drops. At 70 or 80 miles an hour, if you put your foot down, you haven't got the same amount of torque that you had at two or 3,000 RPM further down the, the rev range, and we're all used to that. An electric motor has got a fairly constant torque characteristic, so really from, from zero revs up to really quite high revolutions for it, it can produce its maximum torque. There is an awful lot of power available to us. If you're cruising at 70 miles an hour in this car and you accelerate hard, conceivably it could spin its wheels as easily at 70 or 80 miles an hour as it could at 15 miles an hour. What you've got is very good performance in this sort of overtaking range. Potentially a very, very exciting car, far, far more exciting car to drive than an average sports car. You will have a lot of torque, you will be pushed back in your seats, but it'll be a, a, a gentler launch, which will carry on at that same pushing you back in the seat all the way up, right the way up, and you'll go sailing past a standard car if you put one next to the other. Driving an EV is a little bit different. It's gonna be a lot more sporty and exciting to drive than its petrol engine equivalent. Whether you'd want somebody who's not driven one before just to step in and do it, I'm not so sure. Thank you.